Judy, mm -hmm. what's with the mask? Oh, William, with the change of seasons, all I want to do is sleep. Well, don't nod off just yet. We have a new episode of Garden Time. Yay! Welcome to Garden Time, and it is not the time to nod off. There is so many fun things to do this season. In fact, on the show today, we are here at Smithberry Barn, and we're going to be talking to Joelle about another recipe for apples. And also, coming up in the show today, we'll be talking about taking your indoor plants back inside. But coming up first, the tips of the month with Jan McNeilan. Well, of course, the temperatures are getting cooler, so we are at fall time now, and I'm yeah. here with Jan McNeilan. And Jan, we're still doing stuff in the garden and paying attention. What are we talking about today? Absolutely. These are some pots that I'm either going to clean out or uh, cut back or get rid of some of the annuals. And what I wanted to talk about is literally deconstructing a pot rather than we talk about what we're going to put in. Yeah, we um, talk about constructing them absolutely. and making them beautiful. But, now we've done that, but right. this is Well, this is a apart. really gorgeous pot, and I really don't want to lose it right. from water or expansion and freezing. Uh, so I'm going to take this Swedish ivy because it's a wonderful house plant, and I'm going to root it and take it in. Oh. Oh. Um, yeah, they're just, they're great. And so that's what I'm going to do with that part. This is a euphorbia. And just, j all and you I'm did just going to fill it with fill water. Fill it with water. Okay, cool. Yeah, it'll root. Um, and then I'll take the rest of it out, which may or may not be easy, but it's probably not. Um, take the rest of it out. And then here's a euphorbia that is, it'll die back. You can use it in some winter pots for a while till it really gets super cold. And then I'll take this geranium out. I cut it back and then I'll put it in the greenhouse for the winter and see if I can make it do its thing next year. Because those, the, the geraniums often will do that. Yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll for sure. They'll come back in the next sure. year if you put them in. So what, what I would do next is take all this soil out and I have another big garbage can that I put the used soil in. And then I, I would make sure that the drain hole is, uh, is clear and then with the empty pot, I would just, maybe under a roof or in a garage or whatever, I just turn it over. So you just flip them over, I'm assuming then, because you don't want any water to collect no. in them at all. Right, right. And it wouldn't if the drain hole is clear. Right, right. So that's what I would do. Um, or you can just at least take all this out and you can put some nice fall plants in here and then do it later. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do is take a lot of pots that are indoor plants and I'm going to look at the soil, I'm going to clean it up, I'm going to see if there's any insect or diseases uh, on the plant itself. I might just scrape off, say, the first inch of soil and put a new layer on of potting soil right. and, and make sure you inspect it well. This is a Hoya and it's going to go back in the kitchen. It'll um, be just fine. See right there? Yep. That's a bunch of spiders. Well, it Looks was. Like or something. Yeah. yeah, it was. Just and look so just at it carefully, carefully. And then um, there, the coleus are going to die off. Anything that you know is a perennial, you might want to save. And then, you know, talking about that, what about fall pests? Is there something we should be paying attention to? Well, they, like us, want to put little <laughs> jackets on and, <laughs> and if in, in lieu of that they'll come in the house um, and they're also going to feed as much as they can at the end of the season. Um, the other thing is if you get one slug now you're going to save hundreds of eggs from spring. True. So uh, that's another thing to do but just check your plants and make sure they're okay. So Jan, what else should we be doing in the gardens right now? Well at this time of year you can uh, well, for me, my tomatoes are done and said and done. Yeah. If there's any disease on them, pull them and then put them in not in the compost, but in your uh, yard debris. Um, if you have some translucent green uh, you, uh, tomatoes left, you can bring them in because they still will ripen. And fried green tomatoes. Yeah, num num. <laughs> anyway, there's still lots of other things, kale and beets and carrots and things in the garden. So you could... Um, still be picking those and then clean up all your other beds. Wonderful. Well, you know, there's always something to do in the garden. And with Jan's help, we can help tell you what it is that you should be doing. Thanks so much, Jan. You're welcome.
Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, and I'd like to invite you to our annual apple tasting. No one does apples like Portland Nursery, so come join us, always the second and third weekends of October. Sample a variety of apples from sweet to tart. Enjoy fresh pressed apple cider, piping hot apple strudel, and bins of freshly picked apples and pears. We'll have live entertainment, crafts for the kids, and cooking demonstrations. Don't miss our annual apple tasting at our 50th and Stark location. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Take the hard work out of yard work with the amazing new leaf hopper. It's so lightweight and easy to use and it goes where wheelbarrows can't. Simply fill, then fold, then funnel into yard containers or compost bags. It's perfect for carrying leaves, twigs, branches, and more. Use the leaf hopper to add mulch or gravel in no time. Get your leaf hopper today for only $19.99 plus shipping and handling online at easyhaultarp.com. All major credit cards accepted. That's easyhaultarp.com. Located in the heart of Willamette Valley's hops, hazelnut, and wine country, Caddy Farms is a beautiful option for your upcoming wedding or event. Enjoy the diverse venue the over 40-acre farm offers with manicured gardens, a private forest and spacious meadow, chef's kitchen, and covered patios. All just five minutes off of I-5 in Aurora, Oregon. Caddy Farms, now booking upcoming events. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. I'm at Sagawa Nursery in Woodland, Washington. I'm with Brian, and Brian, you know, we love crepe myrtles, yeah. and they're kind of done flowering this time, but man, do you get a lot of extra bang with these? They are, they offer so much more than just the flower. You know, they're, they have the, you know, the crepe-like flowers in the nice clusters, comes in different colors, but it's one of those several interest trees or plants, and versatile as a tree or plant too. You can have a tree, a big bush, and, uh, What's nice is the bark is one thing for winter interest. Oh, look at it, it's very yeah. pretty. And then we get, the, of course, the fall coloration is just starting now. I think as soon as it gets a little cooler, you're gonna start getting more oranges and reds, just covers the whole tree. And then the springtime, you get the flowers, so. And these are pretty nice, and they only get maybe 15, 20 feet, so yeah. kinda nice for a smaller garden. Very nice for that small tree. You know, houses today, the lots are a little bit, uh, they don't have as much side yards and things like that, but. They also offer it in a, like a kind of a semi-dwarf and dwarf forms also available. Oh, so you have smaller ones too that don't get this big. That's right. There's some that uh, four to six foot and, you know, some eight to eight, eight to foot, six to eight foot range and stuff like that. So. And now do we want to prune them at any time? Does that help with the flower production? Oh, I think so. You know, they, they like to do that. Uh, you can see that two, three foot of elongation of, I mean, that's just that's how you get a large tree so you can easily keep it uh, you know maybe think about trimming one third of that back down and keep it a little more fuller and bushier um, otherwise you can let it grow open and tall but uh, i think after flower is a good time to prune these up back so and we want to plant them now because it's fall it's a great time to plant. that's right you got all the fall and winter to, uh, to get them established and they're going to do a lot better for the fall and spring and summer so it's just better for them yeah so if you need some like late season interest for your trees crepe myrtles are really a good one to uh, put in and right time yeah. is right now so come on over to sagawa nursery talk to brian and his staff thanks so much brian thanks Judy. Well, you know, with the turn of seasons, all the house plants that we've had outside for the summertime really need to start coming in for the fall. That is true, Judy. And you know, a lot of times when I have mine outside, I take them over by someplace close to a hose. I look at them to see if I actually see any insects. And that's pretty easy to decipher. Even if I don't see any, then I take a nozzle like this dram and I kind of lay them over and just really hose them off. Now, what I don't do is I don't use the gentle little mist button <laughs> because that's really not gonna do anything. Right. The purpose is to actually knock them off. So I give them a good spraying down, trying to get all of the adults and maybe some eggs and babies along the way that I can actually see. 
Right. You know, doing that first is really a great idea because you do get rid of hundreds of them. But you also want to do some insurance on it so you're not bringing any insects into your home. These two products will kill on contact any insects that are on those house plants because you don't want to bring anything inside. Now also, Judy, there's a safer product called Insect Killing Soap. Now this is really good because it is a, an organic product mm -hmm. and you can spray it. This one's a, a concentrate. So if you have a lot of houseplants, you might actually want to think about getting a concentrate and mixing it rather than just getting a ready to use. And last of all, one thing that I always use, regardless of spraying, regardless of whether I see them or not, I put a systemic in. It's a really great little granule product that you just sprinkle it into the plant itself, kind of till it in with a little spade or something, and then water it in, and it really works great because then it makes the plant completely poisonous to an insect for about six weeks. One last step is to really quarantine these plants that you're bringing in. You just want to make sure that no other insects can infect any of the house plants in your house. You know, you've enjoyed your house plants on the patio all summer long. With these few easy steps, you can continue to enjoy them all through the winter. William, this is a great spot for the container. And thank goodness this pot lifter made it a lot easier to <laughs> move it because it's pretty heavy. Which brings up our tip of the week about moving containers closer to the house for some fall and winter protection. You know, being under an eave is going to protect it from the frost and out of the winter wind. Plus, it's going to give it some warmth just because it's against a building. Now, don't forget, because it is under the eave, it's not going to get nature's rain. So you might have to remember to water them and keep an eye on that. You know, moving your plants in at this time of year, that's our tip of the week. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. What's even better than buying a brand new Subaru? How about getting the best possible value from a place that's as trustworthy and dependable as a Subaru? At Capital Subaru, your satisfaction is our goal, which is why you can always expect the kind of service and selection that keeps you smiling. From our lot to your driveway. Get to Capital now and lease the new 2019 Subaru Impreza 2.0i Sport, the longest lasting vehicle in its class for just $249 per month. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. 1,112? 1,113? William, what are you counting? I'm counting all of our wonderful friends on Facebook. And we invite everyone to go to Facebook and like us and follow us. All you have to do is go to gardentime.tv and hit the Facebook icon, which is in the top right-hand corner. It's the best place to get the most updated information on Garden Time. So all you have to do is click us and like us. Every year, trees fall or break, causing property damage, power outages, and injury. Now is the time for Bartlett Tree Experts and Collier Arbor Care to get your trees ready for the extreme conditions ahead. Our free consultation will help to spot the signs of potentially hazardous trees. We can help address problems before they occur. Whether it's trees or shrubs, we can help you get a healthy and beautiful garden. Call your Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts, providing environmentally safe tree care since 1907. Well, I am out here with Joelle at Smithberry Barn, and you know, Joelle, fall has so many wonderful things, and one of the great things is apples, and we get a lot of them here. So you're going to be giving us a recipe. What are we making today? So we're going to make apple butter today, but oh. we're going to do it in our crock pot. Wow. So it's kind of a fix it and forget it. 
So then what would be the first steps in planning this? <laughs> so basically we're going to use three different apples today and we grow about 25 different kinds and so we've chosen some that we think would make a good sauce or a butter. So we have our Akani apple, we have our Melrose apple, and we have, have our Northern Spy apple. Okay, well I, let me interrupt you there because I that why are we mixing types of apples? Wouldn't you just put in the apple you're using? You can do, pretty much you can do any apple. I mean, there are some that are better than others, but we like to do a mix so that we get some, you know, sauciness, some that are good for saucing right. that get a lot of juice. Um, others have a little more flavor profile, like the Northern Spy is a little tart, more tart. And of course, people that come out to the store can ask you those, I mean, you can really help them exactly. choose the flavors exactly. like that. Perfect, yep. perfect. And right now is the time because this is when all of the apples are pretty much available. They're out there and ready. Yes, we've harvested just about all of the varieties that we grow. And and you can pick your own of most, not all of our varieties, but we do have a lot of you pick apples as well. So you have those still available as well. Yes. Yep. Now I'm going to start. Okay. My... And I, I, you're holding your hand, so I, I guess it's going to be a little I'm protecting spray. you. <laughs> and then you sell this this contraption for this also, don't you? Yes. Store? We call it an apple peeler oh, core that slicer. That was really easy. So it peels, cores, and slices all in one. And you just... You're just breaking them in half there? Breaking it in, just breaking it up a little. Right it will sauce down all by itself all by with itself. the heat of the crock pot. So. And then about how many of these do you think you're going to have to do just until that's full? So about 15 to 20 apples, depending on the size. You'll notice some of them are smaller, some are bigger. So I just basically fill it until it's full. Well, then we're going to let you continue this, and then we're going to take a break and come back when that crock pot is filled with apples. Sounds good. Okay, Joelle, I feel like I need to help. So I'm on this side now with some stuff, but you've almost got this filled up with apples. So about three quarters of the way through, we're going to add our spices and our sugar. Uh -huh. So that's your job. If you want to just go ahead and, and sprinkle. This looks like just brown sugar. Brown sugar. We have a half cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of white sugar, and then we have some spices. And, and you can actually make this without sugar. I've done it both ways. I like the addition of a little bit of sugar it helps bring out the flavor of the apples right. but if you're you know looking for something with low sugar or no sugar you can definitely make it without and you can probably just if you make more than one of these recipes at a time which i'm sure people will once mm -hmm. they taste it mm -hmm. then you can now what spices so we have in? some cinnamon we have a couple of teaspoons of cinnamon we have some freshly ground nutmeg and we have some cloves wonderful wonderful and all of those spices you can get at, at your store mm -hmm. as well yes we have some we have some nice you were talking about the nutmeg yeah i have not seen these are actual nut Nutmegs. That's what Correct. they are. Yep. And so you just um, grate them over a fine wow. grater. Wow. And it, it brings out the best flavor. And of I'm the told that they that really makes a difference. Very fresh. Exactly. It's a very fragrant yep. thing. And then what is this? So this is our fresh cider. So this is fresh farm fresh apple cider. And mm -hmm. so we're going to do about a half a cup, and you can just pour it right over the and top. Just pour it right on the yep. top. I like that. There's no lot. It's not a lot of mixing. <laughs> Very easy. And we'll toss it a little. I'm not going to do it right now, but we need to f uh, fill it with a few more apples and then we'll toss it as best we can. We don't have to be too picky about it because it'll cook down and mix up itself. And how and long does it We're going to go for about 10 hours oh, on wow. low. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So through the magic of television, we'll be back in about 10 hours while we finish up. Okay, Joelle. So, you know, 10 hours have passed now and <laughs> this is what it comes down to, which is Tell me what's happening here. So basically we've sauced it for about 10 hours on low and oh, wow. it, it definitely kind of just apart, breaks it? apart on its own. But see how liquidy that is? Right. And so we are going to use our handheld uh, stick blender. Oh, okay. And yeah. I'm just going to immerse it, an immersion blender. And I'm just going to stir it around. And if you didn't have one of those, could you just put it into a blender too and do it? You could. It's a little bit more difficult. You have to be really careful because obviously you can see it's hot. Right, right. And so just be careful about pouring it into your blender. And then you're going to want to bring it back into... I would keep going on this. Right, right. And it would become a complete puree. And so the next step then is to turn it on to high and keep the lid off for about two hours. Two more hours mm -hmm. then. And basically all that's going to do is Does that um, evaporate the water evaporate the moisture, the moisture okay. and reduce it to oh, wow. a thicker, a thicker, more butter like consistency that makes it more spreadable and concentrates the flavors. And then once that's done, this is now you're ready to do whatever you're going to do exactly. with it. Exactly. So you can just keep it in the refrigerator for a couple of weeks in a jar or container or you can freeze it or you can can it. You just want to follow the canning instructions for a 
and regular apple butter. And then what, what is, I mean, I have several ideas of what to use it on, but what do people use it on generally? So you can use it on anything, toast, scones. Um, I put it in my oatmeal every morning. It's very versatile. And then this is, this is some that this I'm going to taste right here. And I do like, it almost has a much more soft butter texture to too. it. So they call it butter, but it doesn't have butter in it. It's just wow. spreadable like butter. And it really tastes like wonderfully sweet apples. I mean, it's just a wonderful spicy apple flavor. It's good. Wow, well, I could see it on ice cream too. I'm just saying that <laughs> French vanilla ice cream. So, you know, we love coming out here. We love spending time with Joelle and learning how to cook wonderful different recipes. So if you're saying, okay, this is easy enough. I know I can do it too. Go to gardentime.tv. We're going to click you over to their website. You can print this out and make some wonderful apple butter just for yourself and your family. Thank you, Joelle. Thank you. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Fall is a time to think of planting and planning. Planting new plants now will help them get a jump start on next year. Black Gold All Purpose can help your plants get ready for winter and next spring. Formulated with a blend of natural and organic nutrients, it contains everything your plants and spring bulbs need for a happy and healthy start. Look for Black Gold All Purpose at your local garden center or nursery. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. Why do the finest builders shop at Standard TV and Appliance? We've really valued the partnership that we've had with Standard over the years. We really are focused on customer service. We want every one of our homeowners to be happy with their home. And we really feel that Standard provides that same customer service to us. Their salespeople are very knowledgeable and they offer a wide range of selection that you cannot get anywhere else. Standard can make your dream kitchen a reality. Setting the standard since 1947. Standard TV and Appliance. at the Home Orchard Society Orchard at Clackamas Community College. I'm a Tanya, and so this is just a kind of a cool time to be in an orchard. It is, it is. And so, you know, the trees are looking great, they've done their job, but is there some chores we should be doing for trees this time of year? For sure, trees? sure. So, orchard sanitation is one of the um, mm. best things that we can do for the health of our trees. And what does that encompass? What do you mean by that? So sanitation, uh, when we're talking about integrated pest management or uh, attacking pests and disease from a number of fronts, sanitation is one of the top things that we're looking at. And so the fallen leaves that are underneath the trees that uh, we so love raking up every <laughs> fall, those harbor a lot of disease organisms that can infect our healthy trees if we, they are allowed to stay on the ground. Uh, and what about the old fruit? If there's still fruit on the ground, we should be taking that up. Exactly. The fruit uh, also harbors disease and pests. Hmm. And then what about um, trimming and pruning? Should we be starting that this early in the kind of the beginning of the dormant season now? No, you want to wait until the trees are fully dormant. And typically they tell us to wait until the danger of uh, frost has passed. Um, we don't get a whole lot of frosts here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, but usually a good rule of thumb is January is the time to start our winter pruning. Uh, and so we want to kind of look for certain things like broken branches, crossing branches, exactly. open up the crown, those kinds of things. Yeah. Now is a really good time to sort of assess your trees and the needs that it has as far as pruning is concerned. So. Um, I always tell people that observation in an orchard is the most important thing that we can do for our trees. And so are your trees 
uh, was the fruit really heavy this year? Did your branches sweep the ground? Mm -hmm. Is it in your mow path? Those are the things you should start sort of assessing in the fall and saying, hey, maybe this winter I want to get rid of that branch or I want to shorten that branch a little bit so that we uh, lessen the stress on those uh, crotch angles. Uh, and it's a great time to make those notes because we'll forget by January. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so those are trees, ideas about trees. And so what about the other fruit that are in our gardens? So it's the same sort of ideal. You want to make sure that all of the, uh, we call them fruit mummies, all of those fruit mummies are taken off. And as far as the leaves and the fruit is concerned, you want to make sure that you get them out of your orchard, out of your backyard, as far away as possible. Um, if that's not a possibility for you, consider um, uh, adding a whole lot of nitrogen mm -hmm. to your compost pile. Sure. And that's another thing that we can do underneath our trees after we've raked all the leaves out is to just do a spray of urea or a fish emulsion which is a high nitrogen fertilizer oh. and it helps speed up the de decomposition process and break down all those uh, bad microorganisms. Ah, okay. And so what about berries? What should we be doing our berries right now? So berries, um, this is the time to be cutting away all of the old spent growth. So depending on what sort of raspberry you have. You either have primo cane or you have those kinds that fruit on the new growth and the old growth. Uh, the ones that are only on the primo canes or that current season's growth, those need to be mowed all the way to the ground. The others, you need to take away the spent canes and leave that what grew this year right. because it will be fruitful for next year. Right. Always have to be looking ahead. Exactly. And blackberries, um, they fruit on two and three year old canes. So anything that's spent, you want to remove those and then you want to attach them to your trellis and right. very carefully with thick gloves. Ah, and I know that you want to turn this into a community kind of orchard. So what's going on with that? How can we help? We do. So um, currently this is a demonstration orchard for the Home Orchard Society. This is a place where we teach classes and we bring community members out to uh, take part in fruit tasting and all sorts of other stuff. Um, but we want to invite more of the local community out and we want to give fruit in exchange. Ah, really? So you can trade your labor for some fruit. So and education. Ah, edu that is a wonderful idea. Yeah. So if you have any other questions about this new program going on out here, please go to GardenTime.tv. We'll click you over to their website and you can find out all about it, how to be helpful and learn so much in this wonderful orchard. Thanks so much. Thanks for coming out. We want to thank you for watching today and we want to thank Smith Berry Barn for letting us hang out. And for this great apple recipe from Smithberry Barn, or a whole lot more wonderful apple recipes, just go to Gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Thousand one hundred and twelve, one thousand one hundred thirteen. William, what? what are you counting? I'm counting all of our wonderful friends on Facebook. And we invite everyone to go to Facebook and like us and follow us. All you have to do is go to GardenTime.tv and hit the Facebook icon, which is in the top right hand corner. It's the best place to get the most updated information on Garden Time. So all you have to do is click us and like us. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.